future. Everyone needs something to look forward to. My daughter, son-in-law and granddaughter gave me a violin for Christmas. When I was in grammar school I took lessons for a very short time. The school stopped giving lessons and took back their violin and I never forgot that. I started out this year by slowly taking lessons and I became obsessed. I was going to two teachers and studying out of three different books. I found myself looking at one of my books and saying, where am I? So now I am back to one teacher and one book. I had a breast operated on and they removed part of it. I will not say this was a whiz because it wasn't, but I was luckier than some. I had the N.A. program and people to walk through it with me. I cannot say my life has been like tiptoeing through the tulips, because that is not reality. I can say that my life is now getting better and I am more open to looking and walking in reality. With the world in such a turmoil, I feel I have been blessed to be where I am. I look at how NA has grown. We are in Germany, Australia, England, Scotland, Italy, Brazil, etc. Maybe someday we will reach the countries that are so damn hard to reach. I have been told there are not many women with a lot of time on the program. I am surprised when I hear this. I just assume there are and maybe they have moved to other cities and states. Maybe even to some of these countries that are so damn hard to reach. When a woman wants something bad enough, look out, she can move heaven and hell. One of the first things said to me was, no one else in this world knows what you want, but you. If you want to survive in this world you had better do what is right for you, because no one else is going to do it. I get bumps and bruises and I suck my thumb once in a while, but I sure get stronger each time. I have a dog named Baba Wawa, she was very tiny when my daughter gave her to me. My daughter said, Mom, here is a little dog and she will never grow very large. Well, she has grown very big and she surprises me every once in a while. Last night she tried to fight a big dog right through a chain link fence. I thought she was still a puppy, but she can stand her own. I guess it's like me. I have grown more than I realized and, unlike Baba Wawa, I have been known to climb the fence and go after whatever I want. I have also been known to knock those fences down. I feel like there is more to say, but who can put all of 10 years down on paper? I would rather spend my time living it than writing it. 126 Narcotics Anonymous I have been active in NA answering phones, typing, and working in different areas of NA. I go to meetings and talk and still feel funny and awkward. Sometimes I am a kid, all hyper, other times it goes so smoothly that I can't remember what happened or what I said, but I feel good. What I am trying to say is, thank heaven nothing is as bad as it used to be and there is so much more of what there should be in my life. I found the only NA, meeting in the world 127. I found the only NA, meeting in the world. My name is Bob B from Los Angeles. On the subject of people, places and things, my story is not much different from the executive, it's just on the opposite end of the stick. I grew up on the wrong side of the track, or, deprived, during the depression, in a broken home. The words of love were never spoken in my household. There were a lot of kids in my house. 
Most of the things I remember about my life are recalled in retrospect. While they were happening, I didn't know anything about it. I just remember going through life feeling different, feeling deprived. I never felt quite comfortable wherever I was, with whatever I had at any given time. I grew up in a fantasy world. Things on the other side of the fence always look better. My grass was never green enough. My head was always out to lunch. I learned all the shortcuts in order to make it through school. I always had a dream of leaving home. It was not the place to be. My great fantasy was that there was going to be something good out there somewhere. I started using drugs fairly late in life. I was 18 years old. I say late in comparison with the age kids are doing it today. My mother ruled her house with a big stick. That was her method. The constant way I gained attention was by getting my butt whipped on a daily basis. I found another way to get attention was to get sick. When I got sick I got the things I felt were necessary, love and attention. I blamed my mother because she didn't make better choices in her life so that I could have been happy growing up. I went into the military because it was a place to run. I stayed in the military for a long time because they afforded me the same opportunities I had at home. Free hot, a cot, and no responsibility. I can say I was a responsible person because I had rank in did this or that, but it was only because they gave me advanced directions on what to do, when to do it, and how much to do. 127. 128 Narcotics Anonymous. My first drug was alcohol. I found that there were two personalities. When under the influence of alcohol and, later other narcotics, there was a personality change. I found out later, however, that this personality change went back even farther. I was two people before I even started using. I had learned how to steal early. I had learned how to lie early. I had learned how to cheat early. I used these processes successfully. I was addicted to stealing long before I was addicted to drugs because it made me feel good. If I had some of your goodies to spread around, I felt good. I had a thing about stealing. I couldn't go into a place unless I took something. I was so naive, I knew nothing about drugs. Drugs were not something that were talked about in the 1930s and 1940s. It is not that drugs have changed, they just didn't talk about them before. They didn't talk about sex, or drugs, or religion, or discuss or explain them. It just wasn't one of those things that was talked about. I first experienced my drug of choice, heroin, in the Far East. I heard about opium and tried that. I found that you could pick up heroin and put it in a spike. There were a great variety of drugs in other countries that you could get by just walking into a drugstore and asking for them. So I stayed out of the country for nine years. That way I wasn't confronted with the attitudes and restrictions in the United States. I knew nothing about the progression of my disease. I knew nothing about addiction. I ran around in the ignorance of addiction for a lot of years, not knowing, just not knowing. No one explained to me that when you use drugs over a year's time you can get hooked. No one told me about withdrawal from drugs. The only thing anyone told me was, don't get sick, and the way to do that was to keep on using. 
One of the problems I found in the military is that they give you orders, ship you out, and they don't send your connection with you. You get sick. You try to back that up the next time by trying to get a big enough supply, and your month's supply lasts a week, or two or three days. I knew nothing about progression of the disease nor the consequences of my actions. The progression of my disease caught up with me, as far as the military was concerned, when I started transporting and smuggling. Also, when you use drugs to the extent that you can't be there for duty, they frown on it. The next thing they do is take you away and lock you up. Then the military did a cool thing, they put me out on the street. I found the only N.A. meeting in the world 129. I was ill-equipped to take care of myself. I had gone from one mama to another mother. They had taken care of me, then I found myself on the street with no one to take care of me. I knew nothing of paying rent working or being responsible. So I had to give that responsibility to whoever I could give it to. I ran through a lot of mothers. I had to learn how to hustle on the street. You have to realize that the military has a lot of equipment that can be sold and I used to sell it, because I like to steal. I had to learn other processes like running through stores winning stakes and cigarettes under my arm, jumping from second story windows, and running from policemen. I think there is a certain excitement that goes along with drug addiction. It was a lot like my childhood games of cops and robbers. I found out that there are more policemen than drug addicts. They were standing around watching you. I could never understand how they could go into a crowd of people and pick me out, and say, let's get in the car, let's go. Nine times out of ten they had me dirty. During the process of finding mothers, one mother found me. I thought I should hem this one up and get papers on her, then she couldn't run away. I chose correctly. I chose someone who wasn't using. I knew about the ones that were using. They were never there when I got locked up. They never had bail money. They could never visit because they were too busy taking care of their own habits. So I found one of those unsuspecting ones. She was in school and working and she had a place to stay. She had one shortcoming. She didn't know she needed someone to take care of. I was a prime candidate. I wanted to be taken care of. She was going to help me get my act together. She proposed to me in jail and I said, yes, I do. Just go down and pay the bail. For the next three years I ran her crazy trying to keep up with me. Then she went out and found the only Narcotics Anonymous meeting in the world. How she did that, I don't know. At that time, there was only one meeting in the whole world, and she went out and found it, and I sent her off to the meeting. I had her go check it out. You have to realize that in those days, drug addicts were very unpopular. To just intimate that two drug addicts were going to congregate anywhere would constitute a police stakeout. That's the way they treated drug addicts at the time. There was very little understanding about addiction. I was very leery about anything to do about helping drug addicts. I knew what they did with drug addicts. They locked them up, period. There was no program to go to, except in featuring, Worth and Lexington, 130 Narcotics Anonymous. I always had a sad story to justify my using. 
One day, after one of those six month trips to go get a loaf of bread at the corner grocery, I came home and my bags were sitting by the door. She had told me 50 times or a thousand times, you got to go. This time was different, there was something in her voice this time. So I took my bags and went to the only place there was to go, the street. I had become accustomed to living in the street. I knew how to live in the back of old cars, old laundry rooms, any old empty building, your house or my house. Of course, I never had my house. I couldn't pay the rent. I never knew how to pay rent. If I had three dollars in my pocket, that three dollars was going for drugs before a place to stay. It was that simple. I think I paid rent one time while I was using drugs and living on the street, that was just to move in. It was called, catch me if you can, from then on. It usually didn't make any difference, because I was a ward of the state much of the time anyway. I just ran in the streets until they locked me up, then I had a place to stay. I could rest up, and get my health back in order to go back out and do it again. I came to Narcotics Anonymous nearly 21 years ago, written in 1981. But I didn't come for me. I came just to keep her mouth shut. I went to meetings loaded. I didn't have a driver's license. I was unemployable. I had no place to stay. I was the wrong color. I had no money. I didn't have a car. I didn't have an old lady, or I needed a new one. I took them all these problems and they would tell me, keep coming back. And they said, work the steps. I used to read the steps and thought that that was working them. I found out years later that even though I read the steps, I didn't know what I had read. I did not understand what I read. They told me in many places that I was an addict. I had been labeled an addict. From the military, to the jails, and right on down the line, I had been labeled. I accepted this, but I didn't understand it. I had to go out and do some more experimenting before I got back to the program. One of the things I had to learn to do was to understand what the program was all about. I had to become willing to find out what the program was about. Only after standing at the gates of death did I want to understand. I think death is the council permanent. I had overdosed a number of times, but that was kind of like the place where I always wanted to be. It was just before going over the brink and everything seemed okay. When I came out of it, I could say, wow, give me some more. That's insanity. I found the only NA meeting in the world 131. The final case for me was that I was about to be shot off a fence, and not by my own doing. I didn't like that. Playing cops and robbers is dangerous out there. They have guns, and I don't like being used for target practice. There were more and more cases of policemen sticking guns in my mouth and upside my head, and telling me to lay upside a wall. My last day of narcotics use or drugs of any type, I had just fixed and two policemen got me spread eagled on a chain link fence that I was trying to get over. I became sober and clean immediately. Everything became very clear and I didn't want to die that way. Something clicked on in my mind and I thought, it doesn't have to be this way. After that last rest and recuperation, I found out that I could work these steps. The sum total of my life has changed as a direct result.
I got involved in working the steps, trying to understand what they were talking about, to really understand what they were talking about. I found there is a certain amount of action that goes with every step. I had to get into action about how the steps apply to me. I always thought the steps applied to you, not me. It got down to talking about God and spirituality. I had canned God a long time ago, then I put that in church, and I didn't have anything to do with church. I found out that God and spirituality have nothing to do with church. I had to learn to get involved. It has been one hell of an adventure. My life has changed to such an extent that it is almost unbelievable that I was ever there. However, I know from where I came. I have constant reminders. I need that constant reminder of newcomers and talking with others. This program has become a part of me. It has become a part of life and living for me. I understand more clearly the things that are happening in my life today. I no longer fight the process. I came to meetings of Narcotics Anonymous in order to take care of the responsibilities that have been given to me. Today, I care. I am addicted to the loving and caring and sharing that goes on in NA. I look forward to more of these things in my life. My problem is addiction, it has something to do with drugs being the means of not coping with life, it has something to do with that within, that compulsion and that obsession. I now have the tools to do something about it. The 12 steps of recovery are the tools. 132 Narcotics Anonymous Alien From a very early age I had an intense feeling and belief that I was different. And While other girls my age were trying on mom's clothes and playing with Barbie dolls, I was playing football with the guys smoking pot, and pondering the mysteries of the universe. I started moving somewhere close to the age of 12. My parents were concerned about the drug problem in our neighborhood, so I was enrolled in a semi-private school in teaching. Lauderdale, Florida, all this tables introduced me to a more sophisticated drug use. There are many years of my life that I can't remember, and some I wish I could forget. Some periods have come back to me in recovery, but many have not. I have been a skeptic from a very early age. I questioned everything, everything was musing. I used to completely block out any feelings and perceptions that I had toward life. I never was very fond of living, although I wanted to be, and this became evident as the years rolled past and my self-destructive behavior magnified itself. At one time in my life I decided that sports was the avenue of personal freedom and acceptance that I desired. And so the addict within me attacked the sports world with vigor and determination. I also felt that if I could succeed at something, and be the best at it, I would surely get somebody's attention. I succeeded in society's eyes and in my peers' eyes. My name was in the papers, and I was on the All-State team twice, received an All-American nomination, was team captain, I had plaques, trophies, and titles. Regardless of my success in sports, I was feeling empty and the success didn't really matter to me. In fact, it turned out to be more of a hassle than it was worth. I was beginning to hear an endless monologue. You have so much potential, why are you messing up your life? Even with my intense physical training, I simply could never stop using. In fact, I thought that using drugs enhanced my ability in sports, 
And they also became a reward after a hard workout. I did not attend my senior year in high school. Most of my friends had either quit, been kicked out or had already graduated. 132. Alien 133. I was born and raised in the Miami featuring Lauderdale area. So, at age 15 I had enough of geographic stability. My heart beat was travel, and I diligently pursued the road. I spent one winter in a tent in the high Sierras of California. It was at this time that I was introduced to the drug of all drugs, peyote. The next few years were spent in a desperate attempt to match that particular experience. Still, the main question I addressed to myself was, who am I and where in this universe do I fit? I alienated myself from my family. I did not think that I belonged with them any more than I belonged in this screwed up society. My main outlet was writing, and I retreated farther and farther into the world of isolation. I did, through the years, try to make things work for myself. I became a Christian, was baptized, chanted to Krishna, became a Christian again, stared at Maharishi Yogi, went to Bible college, got kicked out, went back, got kicked out again. I went to school for training as an emergency medical technician, started nursing school and still felt unfulfilled. This world was just not doing its job to fulfill my every need. I still never felt like I fit into the plan of the universe, and my disease of addiction progressed. Thinking back, I think it was why I knew, as well as how much I knew, that gave me problems. I went from California to Florida to get clean, and when that didn't work, I went to North Carolina, and then to Connecticut and on and on. When I became uncomfortable somewhere, I moved elsewhere. The same went for my employment situation. When I didn't like my job, or I was getting close to being caught at ripping an establishment off, I would simply get another job. Geography was not adequate armor to fight the war that was taking place in my mind, body and spirit. I spent a summer on the Amazon River of Brazil. That did not cure my addiction. Even in the Andes of Peru my addiction progressed. I learned that custom officials love to see Bibles in your luggage and they also love to hear that your item of business in a particular country was church or missionary affiliated. A few months before I found the program, I was working in retail and found a wonderful supplier for my habits, my manager. Now all I had to do was to make it to work. In fact, all of a sudden, work was not all that bad. I began to work 14-hour days. It was my perpetual and ultimate connection, and life became more blurry every day. I found myself doing things for drugs that I didn't want to do. But I did anything that I had to do to stay high. Music became so much a part of my routine that, at one point, it was accepted behavior to cut lines of cocaine on the restaurant. 134 Narcotics Anonymous Table I became oblivious to the fact that what I was doing was illegal. I never could figure out why it seemed like people were always staring at me. I remember thinking, God grant me the power to change the people, places, and things that do not agree with my way of thinking. I could never figure out why this world would not devote itself to making me happy. Today I realize this is insane thinking, and insane thinking helps qualify.
by me for the program of Narcotics Anonymous. Insane thinking is one of the obvious characteristics of the disease of addiction. I had an idea.